12 US service members in the Kabul airport have died following two alleged bombings near the Kabul airport. ISIS has taken responsibility. One of them has been reported as a suicide bombing. It's likely that the second is also a suicide bombing. Now, this has to do with the fact that of course you have America and its allied countries trying to evacuate citizens, American citizens in the case of the US and also Afghan allies of ours out of the country. We need the cooperation of the Taliban enabled to in order to do that and the Taliban is supposed to be providing the security at the checkpoints to ensure that some nefarious figures including suicide bombers don't enter the airport. Now one of the bombers got caught at the checkpoint and decided to you know, detonate the bomb anyway. But one individual, one ISIS fighter did manage to get through the Taliban checkpoint and during a press briefing today, generals are saying that the US is relying on the Taliban to do some of the initial security. But they say that some of them are good at providing that security, some are not as good. So it doesn't appear at the moment that the Taliban just allowed the suicide bomber to get through. It seems that you know whoever was at that checkpoint obviously didn't do a good job in ensuring that the person was who he claimed he was. So go ahead, Jake. Yeah, so that, that gets to one of my points. So right, right now, of course, as usual, cable news is yelling at the top of their lungs that it's all Joe Biden's fault. Now, if you watch the Young Turks regularly, you know that we think a lot of things are Joe Biden's fault. But this, I, I just don't think that this is one of them, the, the bombing in particular, mm-hmm. right? So have they not done a good job of planning the exit? Yes, but that leads to the second point, which is the same as the blame for the bombing. So to CBS's Nancy Cortez is their White House correspondent. And she came out today and said, this is quote, the worst day of the Biden presidency. So now look, in some ways it's true. A lot of service members died and obviously this is bringing down those poll numbers, both the politics and the policy, the reality of people not being able to get out, etc. right? On the other hand, well, isn't it also the worst day for the Pentagon? I mean, so yeah. somebody let him through the checkpoint. Maybe it was a Taliban person originally. And remember, Taliban and ISIS are enemies. We have to remind people of that a thousand times, right? And 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 maybe it was somebody on the ground for us, right? Now, I'm not blaming the f- folks that had to stop the bomb at the last second. That's nearly impossible. Mm-hmm. But if you're saying that, and this happened in social media, I said, look, why aren't we blaming the Pentagon? So what, the Pentagon is totally faultless, but it's all the president's fault. Why aren't we blaming the intelligence agents, the CIA? You wanna blame all of them, great, I agree, okay? But if you just wanna say no, and in fact, of course, somebody responded and said, no, you know, how could the Pentagon possibly know what was gonna happen on the ground? Well, then how could Biden know? Can I- how can you say that Biden should have known, but none of the generals should have known? The CIA shouldn't know, intelligence agencies should know, but somehow magically, the president should know. Can I jump in real quick? Because fact of the matter is, the Pentagon and Biden specifically did know that there was a threat by ISIS, which is what they had been repeating over and over again this week. Because there were people, of course, trying to flee the country. So people are trying to get into the airport. Biden has warned American citizens on the ground in Afghanistan, please don't do that because it it creates more chaos in this situation. And we're worried about ISIS fighters targeting US citizens and our allies as we're trying to do these evacuation efforts. And so the warnings were there. Of course, they didn't know that there was gonna be a very specific attack on this day and it was gonna be carried out the way it was. But they had intel indicating that there were some serious threats. And I think that you know a lot of the commentary that you see, whether it be on cable news or on Twitter, it tends to be very black and white. Like everyone's looking for a scapegoat, right? And I understand the human desire to find the scapegoat. But at the same time, getting troops out of Afghanistan was always gonna be a messy situation. Could Biden have prepared it better? I guess, but no one's really provided specific examples of what the administration was supposed to do to plan the evacuation efforts better. We unfortunately, unfortunately, need the cooperation of the Taliban 
who now has control of Afghanistan. And yes, the Taliban and ISIS, they are not friends, they do not get along, they are enemies. And so it's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so look, the smart critique that is balanced and and spread across all the people who deserve it is great. There's nothing wrong with that. Has the exit been smooth? Don't be ridiculous, of course it hasn't been smooth. So should you, does the buck stop with the president? Yes, Pentagon, CIA, if you blame all of them and say they didn't do this right. And obviously they didn't do nation building right. Exactly. Obviously, exactly. obviously the Afghan military was not ready to stand up. The Pentagon has been lying for 20 straight years. If you said it like that, no problem, right? But if you pick and choose, and, and the thing I can't abide by is is dumb criticism. So Biden has a de- clearly has a deal with a Taliban to let us out and not kill Americans on their on our way out. Now people then criticize him for that deal in weird ways. Mm-hmm. They're like, you shouldn't do a deal with Taliban. So what? He shouldn't have done the deal, and the Taliban would then be uh, you know, shooting fish in a barrel as we're leaving and killing all of our guys. Why would that make sense? Oh, you should prove how tough you are by bombing the Taliban now. But then they would murder every American in Afghanistan that isn't already at the airport. And that's about 1,500 Americans, mm-hmm. let alone the people who work with us who are Afghans. Please try to be smart. Now, that's what I love about our audience. We're, our audience understands that. But God, when you look at cable news, they're like, oh, don't do a deal. No, Taliban bad. Okay, te- well, and ISIS bad, Taliban bad, so they must be working together. No, you schmucks. ISIS K and Taliban hate each other. And you gotta do with it, deal with the Taliban if you want the safest exit possible. And is it gonna be perfect? Of course it's not gonna be perfect. It's a mess of a country, thanks to the goddamn Pentagon who ruined that country yep. for 20 straight years. Yep, that's exactly right. I mean, it- this war has been a failure from the very beginning. Remember, we went in to Afghanistan with the intention of bringing Osama bin Laden to justice, which by the way, the Taliban at the time offered Osama bin Laden up to the Bush administration and they rejected the offer and decided to invade Afghanistan anyway. And all we've done is emboldened the Taliban to the point where they have our sophisticated weaponry now, the weaponry that we provided to the Afghan military that no longer exists. Now, with that said, I do want to- No, I'm sorry, before you move on, Anna. Sure. I wanna build on the point you just said. If they were doing real news, right now cable news would be telling you this debacle is brought to you by of all the presidents throughout the 20 years, the people most responsible by far are is, is George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and Don Rumsfeld, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bush was theoretically president, Cheney was making decisions, Rumsfeld made that specific decision, but all three are at fault there. Because the Taliban had surrendered 20 years ago, and we wouldn't take their surrender. I mean, you wanna talk about some serious mistakes that Biden has made on the exit. They would pale in comparison. They wouldn't be 1% of 1% of the mistake of not accepting the Taliban surrender. Can we get any truth in the news in America? No, because corporate interests dominate all of the decision making when it comes to situations like Afghanistan, really. I mean, you see it in the way it gets played out in commentary on cable news and on network news. And you see it in the way that these generals are are handling the situation and commenting on it themselves. They're, they all have ties to private defense contractors. They're all furious that we're leaving Afghanistan because all they can think about is fattening their own pockets. And I feel awful for the people of Afghanistan because our involvement in that war, our decision to go in and 2001 wasn't really about nation building and it was not about bringing anyone to justice. It was all about making money and that's what this is. As the Pentagon has been telling the American people, no, 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 we're, we're nation building, it's working, it's working. This, this new Afghan government, you know, we're propping it up, but pretty soon it, we'll be good to go. Obviously, no, not good to go, not good to, to go. They planned on being in that country forever, that was the plan. And so now we're in this awful situation. I wanna go to this video of of Joe Biden because he did just give a press conference about what happened this morning and he specifically had a threat toward ISIS-K. To those who carried out this attack, as well as anyone who wishes America harm, know this, we will not forgive, we will not forget. We will hunt you down and make you pay. 
I will defend our interests and our people with every measure at my command. I've also ordered my commanders to develop operational plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leadership, and facilities. We will respond with force and precision at our time, at the place we choose, in the moment of our choosing. I believe you will authorize additional forces to respond to that attack inside Afghanistan. And are you, are you prepared to add additional forces to protect those Americans who remain on the ground carrying out the evacuation operation? I've instructed the military, whatever they need, if they need additional force, I will grant it. So uh, that was from a press conference that just took place. Obviously, we don't have uh, much to uh, provide in, in terms of detail. Like he says that you know we're going to go after ISIS K. What does that mean? What does this operation entail? Uh, but obviously, understand that we just lost twelve U.S. service members and. He has to have this tough talk. It's just that we don't have any details regarding what he genuinely plans to do moving forward in regard to ISIS K and getting retaliation for what they did. Yeah, so back to more uh, dumb critiques, right? So he, and, and so first, let me just say, I, I always find that kind of tough talk to be ridiculous. So you're the President of the United States, you have the most powerful military. And theoretically, the best intelligence agencies, but I don't believe that for a second. They're just miserable at their jobs. Larger bureaucrats sitting under their desks at the CIA, at a former CIA agent literally telling me in an interview that she people sleep under their desks during lunch. They're, they're bureaucrats, they're incompetent. They haven't known a thing about Afghanistan this entire time. So they're gonna find ISIS K and the guys who did it. I don't believe it. But even so, you have all those things at your disposal. You don't have to go around and be like, we are going to hunt them down and we're going to be like Clint Eastwood and, and uh, what was it, Charles Bronson and I'm going to put in quarters in a sock and I'm going to roll it up and I'm smashing them in the face like a 1970s vigilante movie. I got it, I got it, I got it. You're going to go try to kill them, okay? And you should go try to kill them. You could be understated, a little bit more understated, but you can't. Uh, can he be though? But he can't though, and I, that's why what I was getting at. Thank you, Anna. Because normally, if you actually have thousands of nukes at your disposal, etc. You could be understated. But he's doing that because of the critique from cable news and mainstream media. Bingo. And so they're like, if he doesn't say I'm going to rip their heads off and you know poop down their you know throat or oh, whatever Jesus. the hell he's going to say, right? <laughs> and down their necks, they're going to be like, he didn't say it up. He didn't want to suck their blood. It's all Biden's fault. It's all Biden's fault, right? Bring in more military. And that's why he had to say the thing at the end about I'm going to give the military whatever they want because everyone in television is screaming, the military is awesome. Why don't you have them stay longer in Afghanistan? Why don't you use the military more? Those are the same nincompoops. Those idiots that did nothing for 20 years in Afghanistan. But there's not a single goddamn mainstream media reporter that'll tell you the truth. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.